Welcome to this short video training session for the Dynascope DS8400 monitor. This training session will demonstrate the alarm functions within the monitor. So to begin with, we're going to have a look at and listen to some of the alarm sounds that the monitor makes when a particular alarm condition occurs. So first of all, if we listen to a low level alarm, so this is such as a lead off condition. So what you'll see is the monitor will flash with blue lights. I don't know if you can see that in the, the video there. And it will also let you know that there's a lead off condition and it will just alarm every few seconds to let you know. So nothing too intrusive. We'll just put that on. The next alarm we're going to listen to is a medium sounding alarm. So what you'll see here is yellow flashing lights on the top of the monitor and you will also hear a different type of uh, alarm tone for the medium level alarm so it allows you to um, differentiate between the different types of alarms that are occurring there. So here is our run alarm. So it tells you there's a run at the top and it flashes in the yellow there. So that's our medium level alarm. The next alarm that we're going to listen to is our high level alarm. So if we just activate a bit of tachycardia there on the monitor and then in a moment you're going to see the monitor will flash red in the top corner. You can see that the parameter highlights and also that you get an alarm message at the top. And lastly, we're going to listen to our critical sounding alarm, which is this one. So we can see here that we've got a VT on screen. Again, the parameter is highlighted and you get an alarm message in the top of the screen there. I'm now going to activate the alarm silence button. So as you can see, it will silence the alarm. The button lights once it's been pressed and it will silence the alarm, a parameter specific alarm, so in this instance VT, uh, for one or two minutes depending on how it's been set up on your monitor. So we'll just put it back to a normal sinus rhythm there. And you'll see that even though it's displaying a normal silent sinus rhythm, it's going to continue to flash for another good few seconds just to ensure that you have seen it and uh, noted it. The button will remain lit until that alarm silence is up, so until the one minute is finished there. The other thing that I can do with the alarm silence button is press and hold it. If I press and hold for three seconds, I will be able to activate the full alarm sound suspend. And what that does is it will suspend all of the alarms across the board so that nothing during that time will alarm. So to do that, I'm going to press and hold. You'll hear three beeps. And you will see that it will give you a countdown clock at the top of the monitor there and that will count down depending on how your alarm sound suspender has been set up. And then once it reaches zero, everything will go back to fully alarming. So definitely not the kind of button that you're going to press and walk away because during this time, nothing at all will alarm. But it can be very useful if you're with the patient and you're rolling them, performing suction, performing any kind of procedure uh, or in the middle of a cardiac arrest situation where you just want to quiet the monitor down and not have any noise from it at all but still with the patient and able to see the monitor. If I've finished doing what I'm doing and I want to cancel that alarm sound suspend all I need to do is press the same button just once and quickly and it will cancel that alarm sound suspend and now everything is back to fully alarming. There is another way that I can also get to our standard alarm sound suspend. If I go into the alarms here and look for the alarm suspend key, 
if I press that, it will give me a two minute countdown clock. So that's our standard alarm sound suspend time. Again, to cancel, I just need to touch again. It may be on your monitor setup, you have one of these keys somewhere in your user keys rather than in an alarms menu. And you may also notice we have another alarm silence button on the user keys here. So one on the fixed and one on the user keys. This is optional, but it does exactly the same as the fixed alarm silence key. So that's your alarm silence and alarm sound suspend. So to set your alarms, there's a number of ways that this can be done. Again, I can come back into this alarms menu or find it on one of my user keys. And here I've got my alarm set up basic display. And that will show me all of my alarms that are available to me to set. You can see the little green arrows here that show me where my patient's currently at. And all I need to do in order to change any of these or to set any of them is to drag and drop to wherever I want that alarm setting to be. Or to touch and just move it up and down using those little arrow keys there. I can also turn alarms on or off from this page if appropriate to do so. So on or off. You may also notice we've got a little workflow that's opened up along the top and in here is Arrhythmia Alarms, we'll come to those in just a moment, but also I've got every type of alarm that you could possibly want. So I could go into all of my circulatory alarms, I can page across to set any of those. The other way that I can set alarms is going via the menu. So if I go into my menu and here, Again, we've got that basic alarm window there. And the other way I can do it is by going into each parameter. So if I touch my heart rate parameter, it brings up my heart rate menu and I can now set those alarms as I want them to be. If you look just more closely here, we've got our heart rate alarm and our extreme tacky and bratty alarms. This sometimes catches people out, but if I try and turn up my heart rate upper limit, it won't allow me to pass the extreme upper limit. So I would need to turn that up a little further in order to turn that one up. And the same if I wanted to move it down at all. So each of the parameters have it, has its own little menu that I can go into and adjust any alarm settings, upper or lower limits. So moving on to our arrhythmia alarms. So as you saw, when I went into the alarms stacker menu and into my basic setup, I can also access my arrhythmia alarms from there. This allows me to check how my arrhythmia alarms have been set up. Again, I can page along to see what's on and what's off. Just go back into that one. So into Alarm Basic and into Arrhythmia. The Asisly VF and VT alarms are generally fixed to on for most departments. If it's a neonatal unit, then you will have the choice to turn those on or off. I can alter the amount of seconds before my Asisly alarm will alarm. I can turn any off or on as appropriate and I can page along and check and set any to on or off. The other ways I can reach my arrhythmia alarms is via the menu, so there, and also if I go back into that heart rate parameter I can also access them from there. So three different ways to get to alarm settings and to set arrhythmia and upper and lower alarm limits. So you've heard how the alarms sound, uh, obviously set fairly loudly so that hopefully it comes through nicely on this video. But if you wanted to alter your alarm volumes, you can again either find the, the user key that might be 
set here or go into the alarm stacker menu and find the volumes button here. Now it says tones and volumes and there are a whole suite of tones that can be selected. However, we do advise that once those tones have been set, that you leave them set as they are. And the reason for this is safety, because people get used to listening out for particular types of tones associated with a priority of alarm. However, you can adjust the volumes. So I can turn volumes up very high and test to see how loud that is, and I can turn them to much quieter as well. And I can do that for each priority of alarm. So my super high or critical, my high alarms, media alarms and low alarms, I can adjust all of those alarm settings for. And very lastly, we come to the night mode. So night mode we've got here as a, a user key. If I press that, it will darken my screen and quieten my alarms. So perfect at night time or patient rest times. If I want to take it back out of night mode, I can do just by touching again. Equally, if I want to alter the night mode settings myself, I can do this by going into the menu, touching the night mode setup button, and it now allows me to adjust any of these elements of the night mode. So I can make it so the volume is completely silent at a level one, a level three, or no change at all from what it's currently set at. I can also choose how dark I want my screen to be. So I could have it left so it's bright, as it is at the moment, dark, which is what I just showed you, darker still, or time only. And I can also choose whether I want my indicator lights to flash or not. So just to demonstrate, I'm now going to put it to completely silent. I'm going to put it to time only, and I'll show you what that means in a moment. And I'm going to turn those flashing lights off. Okay, so now when I come to activate my night mode, I get a completely dark screen, it tells me night mode sound is silenced and I've got nothing showing. However, if you are connected to a central station, you will still be able to see all of your parameters and waveforms on the central station and also be able to hear the monitor if it alarms. This often gets used during end of life care. So just to demonstrate, I'm just going to show you my simulator there. Hopefully that's clear enough and I'm going to activate the VT alarm and you will see that nothing at all is going to alarm here. To come back out, if I press OK and you can see that that VT alarm has been activated and is alarming once I come out of night mode. So as I said, that would sound on your central station. Okay, so those are all of our main alarm setup features. Hopefully that has been useful. Thank you for listening. If we can offer you any further assistance, you can contact your local clinical support specialist on either telephone number or you could email us at training at facuda.co.uk.